What's up YouTube? This is Russell from Russell's Reef coming to you with another update of the Waterbox 70.3 build. Um, this episode we're going to go over some of the issues that I've been dealing with. The brown hair algae is gone but it's been replaced with a cyanobloom and possible dinoflagellates as well. So that's not good. Um, so this episode we're going to go over um, what's going on and some of the things I'm planning on doing to combat the cyano and hopefully get rid of the dinos as well. So as you can see, most of the zoos are a little pissed off. Um, they haven't been opening fully ever since the uh, dino came around or the cyanobacteria. Um, so what I've been doing so far, I did first water change of the system, um, changed out about eight or nine gallons, uh, replaced with some fresh salt water. And I tried sucking out a lot of, as much as the cyano as I could. So that's one thing I did. But as you can see, um, a lot of the corals are pretty angry. So I don't know how well it comes through on the video, but you can see the, a couple of the uh, brown stringy bacteria coming off the, uh, the zoos at the top. And then the sunny D's on the right are pretty much completely closed up and everything is kind of half open, half closed. So that's something that the cyano has been doing to the zoa. That's just something that I think will go away once we get rid of the cyano. Hopefully they'll all open it back up. Um, another thing I noticed was my peppermint shrimp. I swear I saw him take a chunk out of those Sunny D's, and the Sunny D's have been like the most affected by by the whole Cyano Bloom, so I'm uh, I'm thinking about catching him and putting him in the sump, making him the king of the sump down there, because uh, I am fairly certain that he is at least pissing off the zone, if not taking chunks out of him. A little bit of good news is the cyano looks a lot better than it did. Before, I was really worried about the dinoflagellates because, well, we'll have to wait till midday, but midday I was getting that snotty, bubbly look, which is exactly what I had when I fought dinos before. Um, so that got me pretty worried, but as of now, it doesn't seem to be that bad. So that's a good sign. So I did add a couple of SPS frags last week to the system. Um, that was right before I got this huge cyano bloom. So not exactly the best timing. Um, the corals were already stressed from the move and the dips and everything. And then cyano on top of that is not a good mix. So this frag is the lime in the sky stag. Um, it's not looking good, so we'll see. We'll see what happens, but I don't have high hopes for this one. Um, none of the SPS look particularly great, but this guy has lost a lot of color and very thin skin on him, so we'll see what happens. Um, I feel like this is related to two things. One, obviously the cyano and possible dino bloom. But two, um, the other issue that I've been dealing with is I can't get any detectable nitrates. So um, the nitrates are all being consumed by probably the bacteria in there. My phosphate level is readable. Um, it's pretty high actually. So that's not the issue, but ever since the start of this tank, I haven't got any read of nitrates, which is definitely an issue. So my plan for that is I'm going to dose nitrate um, just to get it up and readable and detectable and we'll see how that works. But as you can tell by this picture, I mean, it's the cyano is, is definitely messing with it. You can see it on the setosa right below too. But also, I mean, there's, there's, it looks like it's starving. There's, if there's no nitrate, there's, there's no nutrients for for the coral so it's looking very pale and bleak so hopefully it pulls through um the nitrate is supposed to arrive tomorrow um so i'll be dosing that and then hopefully 
I'll just dose it to get up to around four or five, and then once it's up there, we'll see what happens. But it's definitely an issue that I have such a huge imbalance of phosphate and nitrate. Where phosphate is at 0.25, and then nitrate it has not been readable since since the beginning of this system. So, so quick coral update. This teal acrofrag does not want to die. It has been knocked off the rock like four or five times, and I just figure it's a goner. Um, but it keeps living, it keeps kicking. So it falls off, and then a couple days later, I'll see it on the sand bed, pick it up, glue it back on. Um, so this is definitely a very resilient acro. So I think that guy's gonna take hold for sure, as long as nothing else knocks it off. Uh, let's see. So here's the Montes over here. These guys are getting some uh, really good growth. So they're definitely comfortable. They're taking off. Um, so I know that we're stable enough for SPS. It's just all the other issues of the cyano and whatnot. And all, obviously the nutrient issue. But all of the Montes are growing like crazy. I mean, you can see, you might not be able to tell, but I can definitely tell that these both have significant growth since I put them in. Uh, let's go over here. So as you can see, all the zoos are pretty angry. Closed up, not open up fully. Uh, kind of covered with a small film of cyano. And then here is my organ tort. Um, this guy's actually looks pretty good. Polyps are usually out. Um, doesn't seem to be struggling as much as the stag over there. And then the bubblegum digi, same thing. Still fighting off that cyano. You can see it on the tips. Um, I blow it off every now and then, but once that thing takes hold, I think it'll be fine. It's just a matter of it encrusting and not getting knocked off the rock. And then the Monty is growing like a weed. So that's good. We have good growth and the Alk has been, it's been good. It's been maintaining at between 8.7 and nine. So super stable and still producing good growth. So that's definitely a good sign. Uh, let's see, Hawkins, Echinata. Um, that guy's kind of hard to judge how it's doing. It doesn't look like the skin is as thin as that stag up there, but it's hard to tell with that. So I think it's doing okay. Um, not growing or thriving, but surviving. And then same thing with the Satosa. The Satosa is, you can see, the tips are aggravated with the cyano. It's growing on there. I'll blow it off every once in a while, but they're pretty hardy, so I don't think it's gonna be an issue, but this guy, I think it is gonna be an issue. I don't think that it's gonna pull through, but we will see. And then the Zoas, like I said before, they're pretty pissed off. You can see most of them are only half open, but nothing, I think, I think once I get the cyano under control, which it already seems to be getting a lot better, um, we won't have issues. So here's what I'm dealing with as far as the algae. As you can see on the bottom, brown and stringy. It definitely looked like dino at first, but now it kind of looks more like a cyano. Um, it's probably a mix of the two, to be honest. Uh, you can really tell for the for the dinos when it starts bubbling and then it comes back like ridiculously fast like you can blow it off and then Like an hour later, it'll just be right back where it was so We'll see I'm not gonna do anything drastic yet um, Just keep an eye on what's going on for the next week and then from there I'll kind of try to figure out what I'm dealing with and then make a game plan